So the the Charles de Gaulle story, uh, uh, Charles de Gaulle and his, and his wife, uh, in a very uh, critical time in French history, uh, came to Kerry for a couple of weeks in in 1969. Uh, my parents had due to be uh, going on holiday to Spain. They cancelled it and uh, and got stuck into probably one of the biggest story of uh, stories of their careers. Um, the first picture I remember was uh, my father got pictures of of this uh, giant bed. Uh, being brought into Heron Cove for, for General de Gaulle. Uh, and um, over the next uh, couple of uh, weeks, uh, they came up with scoop after scoop. I remember uh, um, completely by accident, according to himself, my father got some, uh, some great pictures. He was the only one on location when uh, de Gaulle and his wife were, were walking in various locations around South Kerry. Um, he obviously had really good information, but wasn't going to give away his source. Uh, and then on, uh, uh, word came out that, uh, that uh, de Gaulle and his wife would be going to Sunday Mass in Sneem. And uh, my, my mother was, uh, was, was in the church. Uh, uh, all of the photographers were told they could, they could come into the church, but they weren't, to, uh, uh, they weren't to shoot anything. And so they came in without their cameras. And my, my mother was a big fan of really small cameras, uh, a little, little canonets, a half frame uh, uh, rangefinder camera that was almost silent and as de Gaulle and his wife uh, stood up when everyone else in the church was sitting and um, then uh, she pulled off a couple of frames at about a quarter of a second uh, blurry pictures but they were absolutely superb news pictures uh, I remember when she came home to Ash Street as a young kid uh, she was negotiating with uh, newspapers and magazines around the world selling the rights to these amazing pictures uh, country by country um, she sold the uh, the rights uh, for France uh, to uh, to Parry Match, and uh, the picture was used over a double page spread, and uh, and then uh, into individual uh, publications in various uh, countries elsewhere. Um, that was a real success. That was a real a real uh, piece of journalistic uh, uh, execution. Uh, she, the two special branchmen uh, 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 walked her out of the church. Uh, and uh, uh, attempted to arrest her. She pulled away, got into her blue mini car and drove back to Tralee to process the film. Uh, I remember those pictures uh, uh, put, uh, going on to the, the wire photo machine and it was just, it was stunning. She was, she was our hero and it was, it was incredible to see uh, um, a woman ahead of her time uh, uh, practicing her craft at the highest level. It's, I think it's, uh, you know, there's a great work in itself is, is, is great therapy and, uh, you know, what I do is I'm practicing my craft. I've got a, a certain very narrow skill set and I try to, try to, to, uh, to do some, some good work using those, those skills that I have. I try to work with uh, talented people to create something that's more than the sum of its parts. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the Irish uh, as a race have a lot to offer. We're a very creative uh, we uh, we bl blend and flow very easily with uh, with other cultures, with people in other parts of the world, and uh, we punch far above our weight. And I like to think that the work that I do is of, of a high standard, uh, that I, I get a good kick out of it, and that uh, and that the people around me further their careers and and do well out of their time. That we we try to produce uh, something that's really worthwhile, that solves problems for customers around the world. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to know. I mean, I certainly, I certainly was brought up in a, in a, uh, I suppose, a, um, a real, uh, a, 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 a real sort of really unusual situation myself and my brothers, uh, we, we were, uh, to be an entrepreneur coming from that environment was, was very easy. We didn't have any barriers to cross. Uh, we were facing impossible tasks when we, when my father announced that we were going to start Kerry's Eye in March 1974, two weeks later, we had a colored newspaper on the streets. I don't know how we did it. Uh, we were insane. He was insane. Uh, but he led us, uh, he, he led us across the, 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 the valley of death to a place where it became uh, a recognized publication. And 
uh, today has some of the highest standards in journalism in 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 in, in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, you know that's that's but well, that's where it started. Somebody has to be really brave uh, to take the decision, and you'd never take that decision if you if you knew what you didn't know. Uh, we didn't know what we didn't know at that point, and and that's uh, that makes it somewhat more acceptable, and you take the pain a little bit slower perhaps than you would otherwise. Yeah, well, the stockway journey was was interesting. It was a kind of a, I think what's what's happened to me in my career is that it, I accumulate a certain amount of knowledge and I can maybe take on a make a leap forward to another bigger task that that uh, that is probably a, a stretch for me uh, quite often. So I had been a photojournalist for many years. It was a tough game to make a living out of, and uh, I started producing corporate newsletters and you started using new very new technology with the Apple Mac. Uh, when it came out in 1984, started adding color scanning to that sort of stuff, and and made a business that that involved uh, using technology and creating some beautiful publications with it, with this sort of uh, technology that I could get my hands on. Um, then realized that you know technology moves very fast, and the value the value of what you do can drop very quickly. So we were running a, a color a digital prepress house basically. Uh, the value of, of that service dropped from about four hundred pounds a page to forty pounds a page uh, within two or three years, and we were looking for new ways to add value. So we started a, a little guidebook company called Local Story Guides, which was uh, reasonably successful. And uh, I'd always wanted to go and uh, um, to look at, at at stock photography because at that point all stock photography was analog; they were in transparencies, and you rented them for. Uh, what people thought was an, an exorbitant fee, so you know I thought it'd be pretty cool to be able to to create great pictures, offer them digitally on a CD, and that kind of uh, that sort of tech. It seems very old now, but it was, it, but uh, you know uh, back in uh, back in the sort of mid 90s, that was absolutely cutting edge. So that's what we did. We went out and made a whole lot of uh, really cool pictures, sorted by theme, like families and business and so on, and. Uh, Put them on CDs, licensed a hundred a hundred images for for uh, three or four hundred dollars, and and that was a great new business. And it was uh, uh, you you turn a, a a CD that costs a pound into sort of two hundred and fifty pounds, and uh, that was it. That was great. It was sort of uh, it brought me onto a new plateau whereby um, it, it sort of uh, you make money while you sleep, and that's that that, that allows you to. That allows your ambition to grow and allows you to become, uh, I, I guess, uh, put yourself in a different space where you can create a lot of value and where the world is really your oyster. Yeah, I suppose the thing is, uh, you know, we were one of the we were the first European company in the in the royalty-free digital stock photography space. There were two other companies, one in Southern California and one in Seattle. Um, the Seattle one was bought by Getty. The Southern California one was bought, bought by Bill Gates, so we were there at the, at the very start of the industry, and um, a, a lot of people arrived in the meantime of varying standards. But um, we really set a benchmark for the quality of work, the quality of scanning, uh, uh, using color management, so that there'd be great reproduction uh, of of our pictures, and uh, we established a great brand with, with Stockwell, and it was. All over the world, no matter where you go, in the Paris Metro or in Times Square, every nearly every publication you pick up, you see the pictures that myself and my team uh, envisioned and executed uh, in Tralee and in all over the world. We had a lot of operations in uh, in South Africa, in the United States, and Australia and the UK, and um, we were pretty much knocking it out of the park in terms of producing great images that people wanted. Um, uh, we had just launched a, a, a second brand called Stock Disc, and we'd really learned to scale to scale the business. Uh, we went on a mission uh, that that took about 18 months, uh, uh, starting I guess in about uh, 2003, um, to actually uh, to expand from creating 5,000 new images a year to 5,000 new new images a month, and uh, by by really scaling it up by looking at all the pinch points. And seeing how we could create a lot of a lot more great content, and as well as being the benchmark for high quality content, that we could become a, a much high a, a much higher volume uh, creator as well. And 
that worked pretty well. We set up a team in, in Hong Kong, uh, a team of very talented people who uh, really helped us on that journey. And um, it's things started to happen very quickly. I mean, we became a, a, a partner of Getty Images. Uh, they were selling a, a phenomenal amount of images every month. And uh, Jonathan Klein, the CEO, got on the phone one day and said, look, you know, um, uh, I'd love to buy your company. Um, I sat back and thought about it for a while. And um, I decided that uh, some months later that we'd start a process to, uh, to make it a competitive situation. So we had uh, three people eventually bidding for the company, uh, Getty Images, uh, Bill Gates, and, um, and uh, a, a company called Jupiter Corporation. Um, and um, it was a, that, that in itself was a process, a, a lot of learning, uh, mergers and acquisitions was something new to me, but um, I think we got fair value for the company at the end of the day. We achieved $135 million. Uh, the key players, we had only 28 people on the staff. Uh, we had a bunch of contractors, maybe 80 or 100 contractors in different parts of the world. Um, the people who uh, added the most value uh, were very well rewarded, in my opinion, and uh, a lot of them have gone on to great, to, to, uh, to, to great things. Quite a few of them are working for themselves now, uh, running their own businesses, and I think they got a good lesson in uh, entrepreneurial execution that business, they a lot of young people with great passion and with uh, with great belief, and uh, they they really helped me to turn my uh, my dream into reality. And it was a tough road. It's uh, running a, 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 a business across uh, several continents uh, with just a very small team, uh, with extremely tight deadlines, extremely ambitious goals. Uh, and very demanding clients, uh, and a very demanding CEO. <laughs> it wasn't easy for anyone. Yeah, I suppose, look, um, there's probably, an, in, in, uh, in entrepreneurial uh, ventures, there's probably close to a 99% failure rate. And a lot of it comes down to, uh, tenacity i mean those those who win generally speaking deserve to win uh you've got to be a very tenacious person to actually uh to keep going to keep your head straight uh to deal with all of the disappointment i mean uh people speak, who meet me for the first time think i've had a very successful career but i've had an awful lot more failure than success in my career and still have more failure than success uh, is that really important I think that's, I, that's not the way I wanted to be, but that's just the way it is. Uh, when you're innovating, when you're not doing a cookie cutter of, of a business that somebody else has dreamed up, then of course you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make a hell of a lot of them, and it's, and it's going to cost you a lot of dough. Uh, and it, it does, and it still does. If you're, doing, if you're trying to break new ground, that's what it takes. It takes uh, the, uh, you've got to be brave enough to say, you know, I'm going to waste a, an absolute shed load of my own money and my own time trying to get here and hopefully at the end of it I'll get the answer. Look, I, 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 I travel the world uh, not as a tourist, but I travel the world in my professional career practicing my craft, representing a great Irish business. There's no better way to travel the world than to do that. Uh, of course it's great to have downtime, that's fantastic. But I mean, when you when you when you go out there as a uh, as a kind of a modern missionary representing Ireland, as a lot of entrepreneurs do, uh, then that's that's a great kick to actually do it as part of your professional life, uh, to to, uh, to to represent an, a, an Irish company working to the highest standards. That's a great kick, and you know there'll be a, there'll be a time when uh, I won't be working so hard, but when I'm able for it and when I I've, uh, I've got things to achieve. Uh, then I'll, I'll be staying at it and uh, and hopefully not not work so hard in the future. But it just does take it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a, a, it takes a lot of patience and uh, a lot of you know a, a really good team who worked for a long time to to get a result that's worthwhile. Nothing good comes easy. No one that I've met who's uh, achieved a lot has done it uh, with 40 hours a week or or with uh, uh, with, with with sort of. Uh, a, a fantastic lifestyle. You can't have it all, and you have to pay for you have to pay for your success in some way with with with, with, with sacrifices along the road. Yeah, I think I think entrepreneurship is a really important part 
uh, of of the economic uh, future of Ireland, and it's it's very close to our, to our DNA. Um, but I think you know I think people must understand what they're getting into, and I don't I, I don't think a lot of people do. It just it is a it requires uh, it requires a, just a, a level of dedication that a lot of people can't give, their families can't give. They're not a, they're not ready for it. They're not able for it. Uh, and that's that's where I see a lot of failures happening, and it's really sad. We really said a lot of people uh, sort of waste years of their life, and they're never going to get there because they just can't give it. They can't afford to spend that amount of time on the road like I did, and like a lot of others do. You have to be, you have you have to be around the world. You have to represent. You have to be the face of your firm while you're building credibility and while you're building relationships that will uh, allow people to trust trust your company and trust your brand. And not everyone. Is just is just able to do that, uh, and you know, hopefully we'll get smarter and we'll we'll reduce the failure rate by helping the, by encouraging the right people, uh, the people who can actually offer that, who uh, who've got the right sort of skills to do it. And I think you know, a lot of a lot of uh, business success comes out of domain and knowledge and domain expertise, and um, you know, and a lot of, of, of execution now is based on 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 tech. Uh, and, and technology and you know I'm not sure we're, we're really doing very well in that space we've got 1300 or so graduates a year uh, in software development that's not enough uh, by any chance uh, to, uh, to to have a successful uh, uh, te technically competent uh, base of people with which to st to to to, uh, to build an entrepreneurial uh, future um, I think we need to we need people who are competent in tech can't just uh, start a technology business and say, well, I'm going to outsource that to, to somebody else. You know, we've got a real problem in Ireland with regard to aligning uh, the, the educational choices that, that people make and perhaps the educational choices that are available uh, to what works in the real world.